Amen. God is good. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you, Lord, right now for your word. Father, we thank you that it doesn't return void. We thank you that it accomplishes what it's sent forth to accomplish. God, I ask that you just speak to our lives and change them today. And everybody said, amen, amen. amen. Well, this morning, um, I wanted to talk about something that's been on my heart uh, this week. And I wanted to talk about the principle of sowing, sowing and reaping. All right, we're going to talk about sowing and reaping. And it's very important to understand that this is actually foundational. This, this is a foundational prin principle for life, okay? And if we can get this in our spirit and understand it, it can transform our future, amen? I want to start in uh, Genesis chapter 8, verse 22. We'll get the echo out of this. It would be really appreciated. It says here, While the earth remains, seed time and harvest, cold and heat, winter and summer, day and night shall not cease. Okay? This was Noah's, Noah's first act as he got off the ark after judgment had come was uh, to offer sacrifices unto God. He offered sacrifices. Then God gives this this, this command, he says in this promise, he says, while earth remains, seed time and harvest, cold and heat, winter and summer, day and night shall not cease. And so the Lord instituted this law, the law of seed time and harvest, all right? Seed time and harvest, we have to understand, begins even when we're born. Our whole life is begun by the seed principle. Every act of our lives since birth has operated by the seed principle, all right? springing either from good or bad seed, whether or not we're constant that we're doing it. So every decision we make, everything we do in life, it's like we're planting seed. Even if you're not conscious that you're doing it you're, and you do it, it's going to produce a harvest in your life. All right? So we need to understand that there's this principle called seed time and harvest. So there's a way that we can overcome life's problems. There's a way that we can overcome uh, issues in our lives. We, we can reach our potential. Um, our life can become very fruitful, and our finances can be healthy, our bodies can be healthy. All of these things can be ours, but we have to apply the principle of seed time and harvest. Because what you sow, you will reap. What you sow, you will reap. And I hear people saying sometimes that, you know, it's almost like they think God is sitting up on a throne in heaven. And he's got this, this, this little notebook. And he writes down and he hands out judgments and he hands out blessings based on the decisions you're making today. Well, you know, Johnny wasn't so good today, so I'm going to give him a judgment. You know, he's going to get a, a wart on his arm. I'll give him a wart today because, you know, he, he was nasty to somebody. So he hands out a judgment, okay? I'm being silly, okay? Or, you know what, they're, they're, you know, they're going to lose their job because, uh, you know, I'm going to hand out a judgment. God, God doesn't do that. In fact, I believe God could actually go on vacation for the period of your life. Say, I'm going to take 60 years off and just fly to the other side of the galaxy somewhere and totally ignore the, the fact that you're existing and living. And your life can be blessed or cursed based on the decisions you make without even God being in the picture. Amen? Amen? Because it's, it's like God has put this process in place and every fruit, the, the, seed, the seed is in the fruit. So whatever you partake of, that, that's the, the seed is there to bring forth and reproduce. Amen? So the decisions we make will either bring us into blessing or bring us into cursing. Whether or not God's in the picture. Now, of course, God is in the picture. We know that. But I'm saying this is a principle we need to understand. All right? We see uh, in Job chapter 4, verse 8, Job says, According to what I have seen, those who plow iniquity and sow trouble reap the same. And so if you're, if you're going to sow... Uh, if you're going to sow iniquity, if you're going to sow trouble, guess what you're going to reap? You're going to reap the same thing. It's going to come back to you. And sometimes I wonder, you know, if the world has it right and the church is kind of living in the shadows and has forgotten this. Because there's so much in the church about the sovereignty of God. And I understand that God is sovereign. He can do what he wants. But the reality is this, he's bound by his word. And he honors his word above his name, which means that if he says, if you do this, I will do this. If you make this decision, you'll be blessed. If you make this decision, you'll be cursed. There's a, these are laws that are put into place. And if we, if we obey the word of God, we'll be blessed. If we disobey, we'll be in a better place. Better place. A worse place. So, so there's a principle of seed time and harvest. And so you got people in the world, you know, sometimes you can YouTube and it's like, 
instant karma and they show a guy like walking down the street and, and hitting somebody and then they then they get hit by a car you know and it's like wow he got what was coming to him right and sometimes the world has more sense right and this is eastern eastern religion but they understand that there's a consequence to your action and you know what that's a true principle there are consequences to our actions amen whether good or bad all right in galatians chapter 6 verse 7 says do not be deceived god is not mocked for whatever say whatever a man sows that he will also reap. So what are we sowing today? Because we can determine our future based on what we sow today. All right. You know, there was a, this camel and jackal and they were really good friends and they hung out and they walked along the stream and they would eat and they would look for food and fruits and vegetables. And they were buddies, a jackal and a camel, believe it or not. And the camel's a little higher, and he's looking across, and he noticed on the other side of the river, there was these great big melons, watermelons. And he said, wow, he goes, if we can just get across there, we can eat the melons. So the jackal says, I can't swim, but I'll tell you what, I will get on your back, and we can swim across, and we'll eat the melons. So they did that. The jackal climbed up, got his claws in the back of the camel, and they start going across the water. They get to the other side, and they begin to eat their melons. So they're eating and eating and eating, and finally they're full. And the jackal just begins to howl at the top of his lungs, and he won't stop. And the camel says, please, Mr. Jackal, would you stop howling? It really bothers my ears. And, 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 and the jackal says, yeah, but this, this is my tradition. This is, you know, this, this, is, this is a habit of mine. Every time I'm full, I just howl, and I can't stop it. And the, jackal says, and, and the camel says, well, please stop. And he ignored him, and he kept howling. So at the end, the camel's annoyed. The jackal's satisfied. The jackal climbs back on the camel. They're going across the water and halfway through the center of the water. The camel decides to go swimming and starts diving to the bottom and coming up and down. And the jackal's panicking. Stop, please stop. And, he said, and the camel said, yeah, but you don't understand. It's, it's my tradition to go swimming after a good meal. And so the jackal ended up drowning that day because he sowed something and he was reaping it. Amen. I knew my mother would laugh. We, we see we have the same sense of humor. And we see the fruit of negativity. We see it around us all the time. I mean, like, if you put on the news at night, it used to be you'd watch news and you'd see, you'd see the inf it was more like information of what's going on in the world. Now it's so bad, you put on the news and it's, it's like they're bickering and backbiting and dragging each other's reputation through the dirt. And just like, it's just, it's terrible. How many know what I'm talking about? It, we, see, we see actually what the scripture would call hostility. We see quarreling. We see jealousy. We see outbursts of anger, selfish ambition, dissensions, divisions. We see all of this stuff on the news. We also see it around us in our uh, work environments. We see it amongst our friends. We actually see it in our families. And unfortunately, we see it in our own lives. This kind of fruit that's coming out of us. And so what happens is we're marinating in that culture and you know we're watching political debates, uh, we're watching religious conflicts going on around us, different ideologies that are coming forth and it affects us. It just totally affects us. I don't know about you, but it affects me. And I remember I woke up one morning and I was like watching the news and just really spent about an hour watching the news and it was all negative and there was debate and discussion and this person's tearing that person apart and I was getting irritated how many have ever been got irritated watching the news it actually affected my disposition and I my, my wife usually calls me in the morning says would you get up and you know help me make lunches for the kids and get the kids ready for school so I would get up and help with the lunches get the kids ready and get them off to the bus well, this morning, my disposition was a mess. I was just kind of irritated. And I got up, and I actually started a new routine. It's called the bulldozer routine. So the bulldozer routine is you get up. I looked at the time. It was like four minutes after eight, and the bus comes at seven minutes after eight. And so, so here are the kids, you know, in the kitchen, fooling around. Lunches aren't ready. I get up and I do the bulldozer thing. I put my arms out like this and I start walking. And you know, I start pushing the kids through the kitchen saying, you're gonna miss the bus, you're gonna miss the bus. And I'm pushing them to the door. One kid's crying, but dad, I'm missing a sock. And I'm like, too bad, take the other one off. And the other kid's crying, you know, oh, my sandwich is still on the table. You're fasting today, you know. I'm pushing them out the door. I'm missing my coat, I don't care. Out the door, shut the door, Lord bless you. And. Uh, how many know that, that I was actually operating 
uh, with an outburst of anger and selfish ambition, just want to get out of it. You know, you don't, I don't, see, I didn't want to drive them to school. And so I was just, get out. Now, no one's ever done that. But, you know, I felt terrible. And so I had to apologize to my kids. And I said, kids, I'm really sorry. I was, I let the bad guy out. And I shouldn't have did that. I shouldn't have responded that way. And they, they forgave me. Oh, we understand that. We forgive you. So, um, so we need to realize that our disposition, our disposition can actually be affected by all of this stuff that's going, going on around us. And we need to learn to, to, to take that captive. Galatians chapter 5, verse 19 and 25. It says this. When you follow the desires of your sinful nature, the results are very clear. Sexual immorality, impurity, lustful pleasures, idolatry, sorcery, hostility, quarreling, jealousy, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambition, dissensions, divisions, and then it goes on to say a bunch of other things. So there's all of these things that happen in the kingdom of God, right? If, if we're not careful, we're not going to inherit the kingdom of God if we allow these things to be in our lives. And so we need to learn to sow the right things um, when things are so wrong. So when things are so wrong in our life and everything around us is messed up, we need to sow right. When things are falling apart and, and decisions are being made that you don't agree with, people have attitudes, you need to learn to sow right when things are so wrong. And that's what I've had to learn to do and I'm still learning, that when, when situations around me are so wrong, I'm going to sow right. Because if you don't, you won't change the situation. You'll become part of it. If you don't sow right, you're not going to change the situation. You're going to be, become part of it. Your, your disposition will change, and you'll be affected by it. And so we need to learn to sow right. Say that with me. I need to learn to sow right when things are so wrong. I'm going to read this. This is out of the message, so the scripture's not there. But it says, as the end approaches, this is in Timothy, people are going to be self-absorbed, money-hungry, self-promoting, stuck-up, profane, contemptuous of parents, crude, coarse, dog-eat-dog, -dog, unbending, slanders, impulsively wide, wild, sorry, savage, cynical, treacherous, ruthless, bloated windbags. Now, I don't know who wrote this translation, but they had some issues. This is a message Bible. Addicted to lust and allergic to God. And, and you know, this is the issue we have today. So many people are it's like they're allergic to God. They want nothing to do with God. But then all of this selfish ambition, all of this jealousy and outbursts of wrath becomes part of their lives. And so we can either sow hostility. We can either sow um, all of these negative things or we can learn to sow from the Holy Spirit. In Galatians 5, verse 22, it says this, But the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, and faithfulness. And this, this is what we need to sow. And so when, when, when things are coming against us and our disposition is being affected, we need to turn and say, no, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sow, I'm going to sow jo love, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sow patience, I'm going to sow kindness when I feel like sowing anger. Amen? And so we need to be willing to sow from the Spirit. Our disposition is so important. A disposition actually means a prevailing tendency, a mood, a temperamental makeup, the tendency of something to act in a certain manner under given circumstances. And so how do we choose to respond is so important because the seed is in the fruit. The seed is in the fruit. And so when we respond, so you got to see yourself as a tree that produces fruit. And so when you produce fruit, you're either, if you're producing kindness and love and patience and gentleness, it's like fruit, people come and they partake of the fruit of your life. But inside of the fruit is a seed and the seed gets inside of them and it will transfer and begin to produce a harvest in their life. But if the fruit they're eating off you is bitterness, if it's jealousy, if it's outbursts of anger, how many know it affects their disposition because they're partaking of the fruit and it sows a seed in them. And the next person they see, they produce fruit and it's the same fruit you seeded in them by your actions. 
That's why our actions are so important. What we do when we are with people, our disposition, our actions begin to, uh, it, it produces fruit for people to partake of. Do you hear what I'm saying this morning? So how we choose to respond is so important. You know, in the Bible, talking about seeds, there's different types of seeds. There's natural seed that's being planted in the ground, and it produces a natural crop. But then there's also the seed uh, of the, the Word of God. The seed of the Word of God is planted in our heart, and it produces, it produces what? It produces fruit. It produces character. It produces integrity. It transforms us if... We allow, if we keep our hearts pure, keep the ground good, what happens is it transforms us. The, th the, third, the third seed is the souls of men, which is talking about the harvest of the end of the age. But the, the next one is our actions. And there's always a harvest, a consequence for our actions, good or bad. So we need to be aware of what we're doing, what we're saying, because we can produce fruit in other people's lives. Is everyone getting that? Awesome. Okay, so let's look at a few things about uh, I want to touch on about sowing and reaping. Number one, nothing happens until the seed is planted. This is so important. You need to realize that unless you plant a seed, it's not going to bear fruit. As you know, I see people, even in the area of finances, has become such an issue with people. Say, well, I'll give when I have money. My, my bills are so tight, I can't afford to tithe, I can't afford to give, I can't, and the Lord's speaking to you to do something, and, and you, don't, you don't give financially, and you just say, I just, don't, I just don't have it, so I won't give it. Listen, if you don't plant it, you're not going to produce a harvest. And it doesn't just work that way with finances, it works that way with everything. You say, you know, I have no friends. Well, be friendly, and you'll have friends. Show, show love to people, and they're going to love you back. Forgive people, and they're going to forgive you. You begin to sow. You sow first, and then you reap a harvest. And, and, and we need to understand this, is that nothing happens until the seed is planted. You cannot live on the God is sovereign moment and just say, I'm just going to pray and seek God until things change in my life. No, you can't just pray and seek God until things change in your life. You have to apply the principle of seed time and harvest. You've got to plant a seed, because until you plant a seed, you're not going to receive a harvest. It's impossible. And that's why you can have two Christians that love the Lord dearly, are both committed to prayer, and one is blessed and the other one is just trying to get by on their blessed assurance. They're just, they just don't have any blessing in their life. Why? Because one learns how to plant seed and water the seed, and God brings the increase. The other person is just seeking the Lord and loving God, and they're, they're both good people. But God's not a respecter of person. But unless you apply the principle of sowing the seed, guess what? Nothing's going to happen. Nothing's going to happen. The seed has to be our obedience in giving. The next thing is whatever I sow is what I reap. You know, Peter knows this. Anyone who's ever, you've never been surprised, right? If you, if you sow barley that your, you know, corn comes up, you'd be pretty shocked, right? That doesn't happen because, this, the, because the, the seed that you sow is the harvest that you're going to receive, all right? And that's why it's so important that when things go wrong, we have to sow right. Because we can actually change a harvest for the next harvest time. Galatians chapter 6, verse 7 says this. We faithfully preach the word of truth. God's power is working in us. We use the weapons of righteousness in the right hand for attack and the left. I don't think this is the right scripture, is it? Yeah, Galatians 6, 7. That's all right. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever a man sows, that he will also reap. God's not mocked. Whatever you sow, you're going to reap that thing, okay? So when things go wrong, what are you going to do? Sow right. Let's say that together. When things go wrong, sow right. What's that? Uproot what? That's part of next week's message. Yeah. <laughs> Adding to my sermon. Yeah. yeah, she's been gardening. And we have, like, if anyone's been to our home, we have, like, 100,000 gardens. And it's like, we don't know what to do with it. But we're trying. So when things go wrong, so right. And so we need to learn to sow disposition. We need to be patient. We have to be kind. We have to have self-control. Because the Bible says, you know, that raise up a child in the way that they should go. And when they get old... They will not depart from it. What that, that seed needs to germinate. It needs to grow. It needs to develop. It needs to, 
You know what I'm saying? And it takes time. You've got to get the seed in the kids, and then it will begin to produce fruit when they're older. So don't get discouraged if your kids aren't like on fire for God. Just keep pouring in the seed. Keep putting the seed in. You know, I told my kids, I went to a picnic, and I said, whatever you do, kids, do not eat the watermelon seeds because they will germinate in your stomach, and you might have a watermelon grow in your stomach. And they were terrified, you know, just picking all the little seeds out. That's what happened to me. I reaped it. I got my watermelon now. Anyway. So, whatever I sow, I'm going to reap. So I have to recognize if I sow something, it's going to come back, okay? And so 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 6 to 11 says, Remember this, a farmer who plants only a few seeds will get only a small crop. But the one who plants generously will get a generous crop. You must each decide in your heart how much to give and don't give reluctantly or in response to pressure for what God loves a cheerful giver. And God will generously, say generously, provide all you need. Then you will always have everything you need and plenty left over to share with others. As the scripture says, they share freely and give generously to the poor. Their good deeds will be remembered forever. For God is the one who provides seed for the farmer. And that's what God does. He provides seed for us. And when you understand the principle of seed time and harvest, you begin to sow and God begins to bless you when there's a time of need. I can tell you story after story of how we've been faithful in our tithes and in our offerings. And out of the blue, when we were, we were tight, people would come without knowing, say, God spoke to me to give you seven grand. God to told me to, you know, we had a lady come to us. We bought a house. We bought the house and then found out there was asbestos in the attic and we had to get it removed. And it was going to be about seven grand. And a woman uh, in the church came and said, the Lord spoke to me and told me to give you this amount of money. I'm going to pay for all of the removal. And, you know, that's amazing. We've had situations like that because we're faithful that God has come through and he's blessed us and he's, he's brought a harvest that we couldn't even imagine. That's what God does. You know, and then one time, some of you heard this story. There was a store called JYSK opening in, in Kingston. JISK. And so it, it's, uh, it's not Swedish, it's um, Danish. Yes, yeah, Danish. So the store opens, and it's opening day. There's lineups of people trying to get in. And so we, we went, and Camilla waited, and she, well, I think we came back later because the lineup was too big. And so she goes in, and I go in, and we're looking at all this stuff. And then it's getting close to closing. I'm like, I'm really tired. I'm going to go sit in the car. So I go sit in the car. It's like 9 o'clock. Everybody's left. Where's my wife? She's walking around in the store looking at stuff. And, that, and she's figuring, okay, nobody's told me to leave, so I'll just keep looking at stuff. And even though we can't afford to buy it. And so she's looking around, looking at all this stuff. And there's people in the store following her. And so I'm like, what's going on, right? And so all of a sudden she comes out at like 10 after 9. And she's all excited. And she goes, I just want a leather recliner couch. I'm like, what? She goes, for being the last customer, they were giving out a leather reclining couch. And I was like, really? For the first time this is turning out to be a good thing. So... So she went back in to look at the couch, and they were all excited that she was late for the first time. Usually people are irritated when you're late. They're like, you know, get out of the store, right? But they were excited, and so we got this free, beautiful leather reclining couch that comes out and everything. And so she came out and told me, the moment she told me, the Lord said, that is seed, and you're going to sow it. And I was like, but I want a sofa. <laughs> so Camilla came back. She goes, I want the couch. And I said, but God just told me to give it to Paul and James. Camilla's like, hmm? Oh, yeah, I said, that's right. I said, God just told me to sow it and to give it to somebody, Paul and James. And she said, well, let's do it. And that was, it was, this is, this is something that God has given us to sow into somebody else. But the thing is, Paul and James now both worked at Queen's University. He's a professor and she's in, in very high up in the uh, medical field. So they got lots of, compared to where I'm at, right? I, I'm on a pastor's salary and they're loaded. And I'm thinking, Lord, are you sure? Am I hearing God? And I started thinking to myself, maybe I'm missing it. Why would God want me to sew a couch to someone who could buy seven of them? You know, what's the issue here? And I started questioning the Lord, but I said, no, no, I just know we have to do this. So we called them up the next day. We said, uh, we have something for you and we're gonna come bring it over. So we, we drove over in our little minivan and uh, called them outside and we opened this leather recliner chair. She begins to bawl because 
She says, you don't understand what this means. I said, well, tell me. She said, well, yesterday when they had the opening, we went through the store and I walked up to this couch and I really wanted to buy it. And I said to my husband, I really want to buy this. And then, then she said, but then I said, I probably don't deserve it. And I don't think the Lord wants me to have it. She could afford it, but she said, I don't think the Lord wants me to have it. And what I said to her when I walked up, I said, God told me he, he wants you to have this. So when she heard that, she just broke. And it affected her life in such a powerful way because we were obedient in sowing the seed that God told us to sow, even though it didn't make sense. Amen? And so we need, we need to learn to, to, to sow when God says to sow because it's going to produce a harvest in our lives. You know, I remember a few years ago we did this thing called, um, uh, it was an Operation Christmas. What do we call that in Kingston there? Hands of Hope, it was called. And so people would, in the congregation would get cards, kind of look like our visitor cards, and they would fill out the names of people they know that were in financial crisis. And they needed, they needed help for Christmas to buy gifts for their kids and to uh, get turkeys and all that stuff. And so all these cards came in, and we started reading through the cards. And I remember there was one person who was like, I think he was a lawyer or something, and, and he, he was known in town. He had lots of money. And this name came back, and it was so amazing how people began to judge. And began to say, well, why, why would we help them? They, they have money, you know. Why, why would we, we do, you know, he has money and, and all this stuff. And then... But then we just said, no, we're going to just do what God, because God put it on this person's heart. So this food and everything was brought. And it ended up that this guy was going through a real hard time. His wife had just left him. He didn't know what to do for the kids. He didn't know. And, and so when they came with all these gifts and food, it was like it just spoke to his heart. And he was able to enjoy Christmas with his kids. Isn't that awesome? But we need to learn to, to uh, and where the church messes up. And look at this in Matthew chapter 7, verse 1 and 3. Judge not that you not be judged. For with the judgment you judge, you will be judged. And with the measure you use, it will be measured back to you. And why do you look at the speck in your brother's eye, but do not consider the plank in your own eye? It's so important that we understand this. That if you're going to sow judgment, guess what you're going to reap? Judgment. Yeah, but pastor, what if somebody's like totally in sin and living wrong? And, you know, well, then you go to that person in love and say, listen, I'm really concerned. And listen, I'm not better than you, but... The Bible says this, and I'm, I'm really concerned. Why don't, why don't we, you know, let's pray about this. You know, you need to, you know, and you, you just touch them with compassion, with the truth, in love. You don't go talk to everybody else. They, so-and-so said this, and so-and-so did that, and could you believe it? Let's have a prayer meeting, you know. You don't do that. That's judging. And the Bible says, with the same measure you judge, you will be judged. So we don't want to be judging people, amen? We want to be loving people. Another thing about sowing is you'll always reap in a different season than the one that you planted in. The season that you sowed the seed is not the season you're going to reap the harvest. There's always a waiting point in between those two times. And you've got to be patient. And you know how, you see, here, 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 I'll give you an analogy here. Um, let's take a doctor, for example. There's a doctor who's going through... Uh, to be, a, to be um, he's going through medical school, he's working hard, he's in school for 10 years, he's studying, he's working on his exams, and it, he, it's like he's sowing seed for his future, sowing seed for his future, sowing seed for his future, but there's an excitement and anticipation because he looks at the day in his mind that he's going to get hired, and he's going to get the six-figure income, and you know, he's going to have a job, and he's going to, you know, he's have a reputation, and people are going to look to him, and he's going to have a good pay, and he's looking to the day of harvest, so he is excited about the seeding process. And we need to be like that as believers. We have to be excited about the seating process. Hey, listen, I get to serve here. I get to, you know, teach Sunday school. I get, I get to go to my neighbor and bring them a pie and tell them that Jesus loves them. I get to do this. I'm sowing seed so that I can reap a harvest in the future. And when you begin to sow with the anticipation for greatness in the future, it becomes pleasurable to sow the right disposition in the wrong situation. Because you realize you're going to reap a harvest of anointing, a harvest of righteousness, a harvest of authority in the kingdom. It's pretty good. I think it's good. We need to be patient and don't give up. Galatians 6, 9 says, So let's not get tired of doing what is good. 
At just the right time, we will reap a harvest of blessing if we don't give up. And sometimes we give up too early. Do we not get the scripture up there? Galatians 6, 9. Let us not grow weary in doing good. And that's what happens is we get weary sometimes in doing good. But there is a season coming where God is going to increase and there's going to be a harvest in your life. In 1 Corinthians 3, verse 6, it says, I planted the seed in your hearts. Apollos watered it, but it was God who made it grow. It was God who made it grow. And so it doesn't matter, you know, man, man has the ability, we have the ability to sow seed, we have the ability to water seed, but God will bring the increase. So the reality is that we have to be, we have to be willing to sow. We need to be willing to, to cast our seed out because if we don't sow it, we're not going to get a harvest. Luke chapter 6, verse 29 to 33. To him who strikes you on one cheek, this is, everybody loves this verse, offer the other also. And from him who takes away your cloak, do not withhold your tunic either. What is Jesus saying? This is crazy. Give to everyone who asks of you, and from him who takes away your goods, don't ask for them back. And just as you want men to do to you, do also to them likewise. What is Jesus saying? Jesus is saying, listen, if you respond right when the situation is wrong, you're not only going to have a harvest, but you're going to plant seeds in them to change their disposition and humble them before God. Amen? And so we need to learn and understand that when, with our disposition, with our actions, the way we respond, we're actually sowing. We're sowing. We're sowing even to future generations. This is what it's like to live in the kingdom. Amen? Now, if you've sown a lot of bad seed, I know I have. How many here have sown some bad seed? I want to say, that here's the good news, is that there's a harvest again next year. So, you know, listen, I've harvested crap in my life, and I know that I did this and that, and now my kids are messed up, or this is an issue. Listen, there's a harvest again next year. And so begin to sow right now so that you can have a good harvest next year. And the beautiful thing is this, is that with God... God can uproot some of the harvest of the past. Amen. If you'll repent and renounce your past, God will not only forgive you of the sin, but he'll cleanse you from the unrighteous. He'll take the, the harvest out that you should deserve and you won't get it. Isn't that good news? And so if you forget everything I said today, I want you to get this, okay? When things are so wrong, so right. Can you say that with me? When things are so wrong, so right. And so when you feel like responding a certain way, say, no, does this represent the fruit of the Spirit? No, I'm going to respond this way instead. And that's all we can do is to remember that every decision we make, every decision we make, every action is a seed that's being planted towards our future. And so we need to sow right when things are so wrong. Amen? Awesome. Let's stand and, and pray. And then we're going to finish with an awesome song that Paulette really likes. And I, what I ask, if we can do this, because, you know, church is not just about worshiping and preaching. It's about fellowship, okay? If you're used to rushing out, we're done about 10 minutes early by the time we finish. Take a few minutes to fellowship, have a coffee, before you run up and get your kids, because they're probably just finishing their lessons. So if you can get your kids right at 12, that would be awesome, okay? Father, we thank you, Lord, this morning um, for your word. We thank you that it doesn't return void. Would you help us? Give us the grace to recognize and realize that everything we sow, we're going to reap harvest from that, God. Help us to sow right when things are wrong around us. Teach us to do it your way. And all God's people said, amen, amen. amen.